Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Retrospects a new series on my channel where I take a deep dive on any topic and discuss how did we get here In today's episode I want to take a look at architecture about how it evolved from prehistoric rock shelters to ancient wondrous monuments and the modern buildings that we see around us every day So without wasting any time let us begin Our story begins with the very first buildings crafted from nature's simple gifts like wood, stone, mud and straw. Around 9500 BC at Gobleki Tepe in Turkey, we find a complex of stone pillars adorned with animal carvings believed to be a sacred site. Fast forward to around 7000 BC in Israel where the Jericho Round Tower, a massive stone structure, possibly served as both defense and a religious site. As humans honed their skills, we witnessed the birth of permanent settlements such as the Tess El Sultan Temple in Iraq around 3500 BC and the magnificent Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt around 2500 BC, a tribute to Pharaoh Khufu. How did they do it, you ask? Well, they used simple tools like axes, hammers, and chisels. Construction methods included post and beam, wattle and daub, and stone masonry post and beam this method of construction involves using vertical posts to support horizontal beams wattle and daub construction this method involves weaving a lattice of branches and then covering it with mud or clay stone masonry this method involves stacking stones together to create walls and other structures brick masonry this method involved stacking bricks together to create walls and other structures building wasn't just about shelter it shaped our civilization the first cities like those of the minoans mesopotamians egyptians and the indus valley showcased diverse architectural styles each civilization had its own primary materials and distinctive styles but they all shared one thing the ambition to build grand and enduring structures some examples of the building of this time include the great ziggurat of ur the great ziggurat of ur is a neo sumerian ziggurat in what was the city of ur near nasiriya in present day dikar province iraq it is one of the best preserved ziggurats in mesopotamia and is considered to be one of the most impressive architectural achievements of the ancient world the ziggurat was built by king ur namu in the 21st century bc and was dedicated to the moon god nana the patron deity of ur it was a massive step pyramid measuring 64 meters in length 45 meters in width and over 30 meters in height the ziggurat was made of mud brick with a burnt brick facing and was decorated with elaborate brickwork and religious symbols the ziggurat was a central part of the city of ur and was used both for religious and civic purposes the great palace of knossos the palace of knossos is the largest and most impressive of the minoan palaces on the island of crete it was built around 1900 bc and was destroyed and rebuilt several times over the next few centuries The palace was finally abandoned around 1370 BC after a major earthquake. The palace of Knossos was a vast complex of buildings and courtyards. It was estimated to have over 1300 rooms and covered an area of over 22 acres. The palace was a center of administration, religion and trade for the Minoan civilization. The palace was decorated with elaborate frescoes and sculptures. The frescoes depict a variety of subjects including religious ceremonies, bullfights and everyday life. The sculptures include figures of animals such as bulls and lions as well as human figures. Moving into the classical era, Greeks, Romans, Indians and Persians built monumental structures. Stone, wood, brick and mud brick were their palette and they used techniques like post and beam and stone masonry. Some of the most impressive examples of Greek Iron Age architecture include the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus. This was one of the largest and most magnificent temples in the ancient world. 
It was built in the 6th century BC and was destroyed by fire in the 4th century BC. The Temple of Zeus at Olympia. This temple was built in the 5th century BC and was one of the most important religious sites in ancient Greece. It housed a massive statue of Zeus, the king of the gods. The Parthenon in Athens. This temple was built in the 5th century BC and is one of the most iconic buildings in the world. It is dedicated to the goddess Athena, the patron goddess of Athens. Greek Iron Age architecture had a profound influence on the architecture of later civilizations, including the Romans and the Renaissance. The Greeks developed a number of innovations in architecture, such as the use of columns and entablatures, which are still used in architecture today. Greek Iron Age architecture is a testament to the skill and ingenuity of the ancient Greeks, and it continues to inspire architects and designers around the world. Early Roman architecture was heavily influenced by Etruscan architecture, with its use of arches, vaults, and domes. However, the Romans also developed their own unique style of architecture, which was characterized by its use of concrete and its monumental scale. One of the most important features of early Roman architecture is the use of concrete. The Romans developed a type of concrete called opus cementicum, which was made from a mixture of lime, volcanic ash, and water. This concrete was very strong and durable and it allowed the Romans to build structures on a much larger scale than had been possible before. The Romans also used concrete to build arches, vaults and domes. These architectural elements allowed the Romans to create new types of buildings such as amphitheatres, basilicas and temples. Some of the most impressive examples of early Roman architecture include the Pantheon. This temple was built in the 2nd century AD and is one of the best preserved ancient buildings in the world. It is famous for its massive dome, which is still the largest unsupported dome in the world. The Colosseum This amphitheater was built in the 1st century AD and was used for gladiatorial contests and other public spectacles. It is one of the most iconic buildings in the world and is a symbol of the Roman Empire. The Pont du Gard this aqueduct was built in the 1st century AD and is one of the most impressive Roman aqueducts in the world. It is a testament to the engineering skills of the ancient Romans. Early Roman architecture had a profound influence on the architecture of later civilizations, including the Renaissance and the Baroque. The Romans developed a number of innovative architectural techniques, such as the use of concrete and arches, which are still used in architecture today. Early Roman architecture is a testament to the skill and ingenuity of the ancient Romans and it continues to aspire architects and designers around the world. Achaemenid Persian Architecture Achaemenid Persian architecture is characterized by its use of columns, arches, and domes. The most famous example of Achaemenid Persian architecture is the Persepolis Palace Complex. Persepolis was built in the 6th and 5th centuries BC using stone and brick. From the Acropolis in Athens with its Doric Parthenon to the Roman Forum's stone and brick marvels and the Achaemenid Persepolis Palace Complex, these civilizations showcased their architectural prowess in the best ways possible. Indian Iron Age and Classical Age architecture is characterized by a number of key features, including the development of temples, Temples were the most important type of building in Indian Iron Age and Classical Age architecture. They were dedicated to the Hindu gods and goddesses and were used for religious ceremonies. Temples were typically rectangular in shape, with a vimana at the front and a garbhagriha at the back. The garbhagriha housed the cult statue of the god or goddess to which the temple was dedicated. The Development of Architectural Orders Indian Iron Age and Classical Age architecture developed its own unique set of architectural orders, which are characterized by their use of columns and entablatures. The most common orders are the Dravidian and Nagara orders. The Dravidian order is characterized by its steep shrikhara and its elaborate carvings. The Nagara order is characterized by its curvilinear shrikhara and its simple carvings. Some of the most impressive examples of Indian Iron Age and Classical Age architecture include 
the great stupa at sanji this stupa was built in the 3rd century bc and is one of the largest and most well preserved stupas in india it is surrounded by a series of railings and gateways which are decorated with elaborate carvings and sculptures the ajanta caves these caves are located in the state of maharashtra and were built between the 2nd century bc and the 6th century ad the caves contain a series of buddhist temples and monasteries which are often decorated with beautiful frescoes and sculptures the ellora caves these caves are located in the state of maharashtra and were built between the 5th and the 10th centuries ad the caves contain a series of hindu buddhist and jain temples and monasteries which were decorated with intricate carvings and sculptures the brihadeshwara temple at tanjavur this temple was built in the 11th century ad and is one of the largest and most impressive hindu temples in india this is dedicated to the god shiva and is characterized by its massive tower and intricate carvings the kandariya mahadev temple at khajuraho this temple was built in the 11th century ad and is one of the most famous hindu temples in india it is dedicated to the god shiva and it's known for its erotic carvings These are just a few examples of Indian Iron Age and Classical Age architecture. There are many other impressive examples of this period of Indian architecture throughout the country. These buildings are a testament to the skill and craftsmanship of the early Indian architects and artisans. They are also a significant part of Indian history and culture. Indian Iron Age and Classical Age architecture had a profound influence on the development of Indian architecture in later centuries. Many of the architectural features that were developed during this period such as the shikhara the mandap and the antarala continue to be used in indian architecture today and as we turn our gaze to the chinese civilizations we see well planned cities enclosed by walls with temples at their hearts during the chinese iron age which spans from around 600 bc to 200 ad architecture in china experienced significant developments and innovations Iron tools and technology played a crucial role in the construction during this era allowing for more efficient and sophisticated architectural designs the chinese during this time built impressive fortifications such as the great wall which utilized both stone and earthworks these defensive structures served to protect against invasions and secure the boundaries of various states and dynasties additionally the construction of palaces temples and tombs became more elaborate and intricate with architectural elements such as columns arches and multi-storied buildings starting to make their appearance the iron age marked a transitional period in chinese architecture setting the stage for the grandeur and complexity that would become the characteristic of later dynasties particularly during the han and tang period well that brings us to the end of this episode Join us in next week's episode as we shall discuss how the spread of Christianity in Europe, Islam in the Middle East and Buddhism in East Asia developed the architectural styles that were to come in the Middle Ages and how the Renaissance changed architecture for the modern world. Until then, please like and share the video if you liked it and comment down below about any topic you'd like me to cover next. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This is your host Aryan Sharma signing off.